I think the easiest way to get these dimples into the shaft of the blacksmith caliper tool is with a blacksmith's helper or blacksmith guillotine. And you can see that that would just create the dimples, one blow of the hammer. If you don't have one of these tools, and I'm going to presume you don't, then you're going to have to make a set. And we're going to make a set of top and bottom tools. This one just rests on the anvil. This one is handheld, obviously. You're going to hold the stock between your legs, and then you're just going to drive that in to create the dimple marks that you're going to then hammer away from. And those dimple marks, like here, just give you a little bit of room to get your hammer in without destroying your shoulder. I'm going to use a uh, 3 quarter inch diameter 4140 chromolybdenum, about 7.5 inches long. Start with the typical struck end, make a taper to the struck end, indexing over the bic, and then extending the indexing over the offside edge of the anvil. I spread the material at the working end before I flatten it, just to get the maximum use of the material. I'm looking for something that's going to be about 3 eighths of an inch thick, about 3 sixteenths up from the end of the bar, to give yourself room to grind or file. I have two hot cut chisels in my arsenal. One, the blade is parallel to my indexing, and that's the one I typically use to sever bits from the end of a bar. The second, the working end is perpendicular to my indexing and that is what I consider a slitting chisel. And we need a slitting chisel to be able to slit these detail pieces within the handle of our blacksmith's um, calipers. Looks like I could use a little practice in splitting. So the tool we're going to make now is the um, slitting chisel, splitting chisel. Rather than take the three heats uh, needed for the struck end, I want you to work towards combining your heats. Try and complete the struck end in two heats and then eventually try and get it done in one. The working end is nothing more than flattening the tool perpendicular to the indexing. Note that I'm not working on the edge until I've nearly completed the tool. I want you to get the maximum width that you can. And I want this to be fairly sharp, let's say about an eighth of an inch or slightly less at the corners. As with any tool that penetrates a bar, friction is the enemy. Chisels, slot punches, drifts, try to make them as smooth as possible. So look at the shadow line of your forging, that straight line to the edge of your forging. If that is reasonably straight, then the forging should be reasonably smooth. So I'm using smooth overlapping hammer blows. Both chisels, you'll notice, are crowned on the end, enabling them to walk along a bar. The slitting chisel is about 1 16th proud of the corners. So once you've done your forging, I'm going to ask you to look whichever corner is closest to you and go ahead of that by about an eighth and then just cut that off with your hot cut. And that's going to save a whole lot of grinding or filing. Once you've got your tool roughed out, go ahead and stress relieve or normalize it, grind and then heat treat according to the material that you're using. 